Today we're going to go through, uh, as was mentioned before, upgrading ClickFence. One point I should make is that there is a comprehensive document available on our site uh, for the upgrade and install process. You get it from the same place that you get the installer for the server version. Uh, it is, of course, 45 pages, so we're not going to go through it in the same level of detail, but I just wanted to make sure that people are aware that it, is, it does exist. Um, and so let's get to it. Uh, the plan here is to just go through best practices installing ClickSense, uh, then go through just the process for a single node and a multi-node environment because due to the need to synchronize between nodes, uh, it's important to realize that there is a distinction between the two. We'll discuss a few version-specific gotchas and we'll go into a live demonstration. And that will then, of course, be followed by a Q&A where we will be able to answer further questions. So, best practices. Some of these may seem somewhat obvious, but make sure you back up your system first. If you've, if you've got ClickSense running in a VM, then you can take a snapshot of the VM, but otherwise there are backup, uh, there's, a, there's good documentation on how to back up Sense both with manually and with the repository snapshot manager uh, available on our help website. And when you look at this presentation later, uh, you'll be able to see in the notes a link to the help, help website. But if you go to help.click.com and search for backup, you will find that information there. The other things that you're going to need is you're going to need the password for the service account, which is the account running most of the ClickSense services. And you're going to need the password for the database or the database super user password. Uh, without that, the upgrade process will fail. And in fact, it can fail quite badly in the, if you have certain conditions met where you have the database password incorrect, such that the rollback will not work. This is why I'm bringing that up now. Uh, if you're moving from ClickSense 2.2 or lower to 2.2 or higher, I highly recommend that you get the ClickSense cleanup script from our support portal. This script goes through and it removes a lot of older data that has been marked as deleted, but not actually deleted within the database. Uh, it means that you're upgrading a smaller system. Uh, it means that there is less information that is needed to synchronize between the systems. and it can avoid some of the stranger edge cases that you can encounter when upgrading. And finally, make sure that you schedule downtime, especially for a multi-node environment, because upgrading does necessarily involve t uh, restarting tasks, and the processes involved in a multi-node environment mean that you will need to have all of the services down, and I'll go into that in more detail later, on all of the nodes for a while, and you want to make sure everything is up and running before you start having your users get at it. So make sure you schedule downtime. So, in fact, the other point is make sure you know what track you're on, service or feature track. In ClickSense, we have, at least currently, a model where we have service releases that follow on from major releases. Well, what we do is we take that major release and we only fix bugs. We don't add any new features. It means that you don't have any, you have, they're very stable releases in that any bug fixes that arise, any problems that arise will hopefully be addressed in the bug fixes, but you don't have new features that then can cause new bugs. Uh, and you have uh, you don't have the same migration process that is involved with, mo with moving applications to enable those new features. Uh, you can always move from the service track to the feature track, but you can never move from the feature track to the service track without first moving to a new major release. It's a slightly confusing concept, and especially since we have we still use the same version versioning numbers between them. It's just the .o.x are the service track and the 
X dot whatever are the feature track. Okay, so single node upgrades. They are actually fairly simple. Um, the installer will even shut down the services for you. But if you do want to manually shut down the services, especially if you're running a backup beforehand, uh, make sure you leave the database up and running because that avoids some of the complications that can arise during the installation. But it is as simple as after you've backed up the system, run the installer, follow the prompts, and everything should be right. On a multi-node environment, it's a bit more complicated. So on a multi-node environment, the key thing that we want to avoid is a two different versions of ClickSense trying to synchronize with each other. Upgrading between versions of ClickSense generally involves some changes to the underlying databases, and they are just simply not designed to be synchronizing across versions. So what you should do is you should shut down each node, and then you want to, uh, but leaving the database service running. And then what happens is you upgrade each node one at a time. You start with the central node, you run the upgrade, you check once you bring up the central node that everything is running, you haven't run into any problems with app migrations or any uh, services that won't come up. You want to make sure that's working, and then you add, you add a new RIM node. You check that that room, you upgrade that room node, you check that room node's going. It takes a while because you're not doing this in parallel, but it simplifies the processes of troubleshooting and checking that everything is working. The last thing you want is to find that you've spent a whole lot of time upgrading a system and everything has stopped working and you're not sure at what point things stopped working. And you're not sure how cleanly you can roll things back. So there's a few version specific features that you should probably should be aware of when upgrading ClickSense. So when you're moving from an earlier version to 2.2 or above, we've changed uh, how you configure Sense, uh, the location that apps are stored in Sense. It used to be in the older versions that you made a configuration file change in the engine configuration. In 2.2 and above, this is done through the QMC. Unfortunately, you will need to make that change to the configuration in in 2.2 in the QMC, even if you previously made that file change. So that means that when you start up the system in 2.2 or above, you will see a lot of apps fail to migrate because the system is looking in the wrong location for them. What that means is you need to go in to the QMC, change that app storage location, and then tell the apps to migrate again. And everything should work. The other thing is if you have a large system, especially an old system, uh, we've moved in 2.2 and above to a model where we cache the database in memory. This takes a bit of time. And if you have a large database and a not very powerful server, you can encounter a problem where the system will not start up. And uh, you will see, if you go into the repository system log, you'll see an error message there uh, that indicates that there was a timeout connecting to the database during this caching process. If you go into the support portal and you look up the repository timeout, there is a configuration file that will allow you to adjust that timeout and increase it so that your system will start up. If you encounter this problem, your system literally will not run until you do this. And finally, as I mentioned before, there is a cleanup script. So this goes hand in hand with that repository timeout thing. If you reduce the size of the database, you reduce the amount of time it takes to cache all of this information into memory. There, the reason why we did that is to improve the performance of the system while it's running. But this is the trade-off. It takes longer to start up, and you need to make sure that the database is being properly cleaned up. And that was not a guarantee with the earlier version. So that's why you want to make sure that you run that cleanup script. The other thing is Sense 3.0 introduced two new services, the broker service and the hub service. This 
uh, introduced two new ports that we now need that, to run and have so to have open on the service. So that if you do not have the the uh, broker port and the hub, which I believe are ports for um, actually I. In the notes for this, I have a link to the, our help site, which lists all of the ports that we use. I'm not going to try and remember them off the top of my head. That if I give you the wrong number, that will be worse than useless. So I will stick with just refer to the help site for more information on that. Again, the easiest way to find the information on the help site for this is if you go onto the help site and you search for ports, there is a port overview and a port example page, both of which go into the details as to what ports need to be open. And the example page has examples of multi-node configurations and the ports you will need to consider for those. All right, let's move on to a live demonstration. So what I have here is I have a sentence server. It is running sense 2. 0.7. And I can demonstrate that if we open up QMC. We will have, well you, this is the simplest way to find the version of the server. Okay. So, if we go here and we log in, then we look down in the bottom right hand corner, we will see version 2.0.7. So this is the this is a fairly old version of ClickSense. And it's up, it's running, we have a few applications, it's not a very big system. Uh, and we can see that sitting there. So the other uh, so we're going to upgrade this system to sense 3.0.2. So I have prepared a folder for backups and a folder for with the installers. So what we will do first is we're going to back up the system. For this, we're going to use the repository snapshot manager. The repository snapshot manager comes included with ClickSense. It is installed in here. There are instructions on how to use it on our website, but it is installed in the uh, utilities directory here. And there's a readme file which contains information on how to use it, but there is also, uh, the recommendation is to copy it to another folder before you use it, because when you use it to restore the system, it will delete the old sense installation and you don't want to try and delete the file you're currently using. Uh, and I've made a batch file to run the backup command. So here you can see it runs the snapshot manager.exe. It tells it to back it up, to back up, and I've provided it with the database password. So this needs to be run as the same user that runs the sent system. This will shut down and restart the services uh, when we run it. So it will result in some downtime. Uh, but it also backs up the applications. The, it can be set up to back up a support directory which contains, say, QVDs. Uh, so that is possible to do. It backs up the certificates as well. So we will tell that to go. And you can see it creates all of this and it stops the services and it creates a backup of the database. And hopefully, we will not need to use this. I should get this fully done. So here we go just stuffing the engine and the repository and there we go it's using the backup and there we go and then it starts up our services again for us so you can see that I tested this earlier today so 
I had reason to know that it the backup would work. Uh, and once that is complete, we will move on to the upgrade. Should actually finish with a closing statement. There we go. It had press any key to exit, and it exited. Okay, great. So now we will run our installer. So here we go. Uh, wait, sorry. Before I do that, let's do this part, which is to run the cleanup script. So once that installer actually comes up, I will close it back down. Unfortunately, I forgot to do the bit that I wanted to do here, so I'll just wait for this to finish unpacking those files. And we're going to need to leave that for the moment. So here is the sense cleanup script. So there is a pa it consists of a series of SQL files and a PowerShell command. So this uh, PowerShell file will ask you to provide it with the install folder for ClickSense, and that's so it can get at the uh, Postgres software that's been installed with ClickSense, and it will then run the uh, backup, well, not backup, the cleanup command. So you just tell it where Sense is, and it will also request uh, that you make sure you make a backup, which we already did, and it will re stop the various services because we don't want to be writing to the database while we clean the database up. That's generally a bad move, and it will then ask us for a password. Ah. This. Does this need, yeah, this also should be run on all Windows nodes. I just, I think I missed a step as well here, and that I don't think, oh no, we've got admin rights, good. Because it can complain if you're running it as not the um, account running the sense services. But since we have the rights to, shut up, to stop those services, this should be fine. There we go. So we should check the errors in the log, and we should run that there. So here we have the log. We've got, you can see the commands being run. And because this is a fairly um, small system, there isn't actually anything for it to delete, so it doesn't take very long. In a much older system, which is where we're really concerned about running this, this would take longer. And now we will actually upgrade the system. So we go back to installers, and we run that new installer. OK. So you can see, moving to 3.02, I should note that in 3.1, there is unfortunately a uh, bug, which means that the version number that gets displayed in the installer is, is very different from 3.0.1. I believe it's 10 dot something. Um, that's a cosmetic issue. It's embarrassing um, and unfortunate, but it is something that you should be aware of and don't worry about it when you see that. Uh, so we had to provide it the password for the service, uh, and we had to provide it the password for the account uh, for the database. If you get the database password wrong, and the database service is not running, the what happens is, if the database service is running when you run the installer, it will check that the password you gave it is correct. If the software is not running, so the the Postgres uh, the repository database is not running, then that step is skipped, and it will only check the password uh, when it 
installs the new version of the repository, and then it will check the password. And if it fails, it will roll, it will stop the installation and roll back. And by roll back, I mean it will uninstall the repository database software. Um, it won't install the old version of the repository database software, and you end up lacking a repository database. Uh, you don't lack the actual database, but you lack the install of Postgres, uh, and that obviously means your system doesn't work very well. Uh, so if you do encounter that problem, the solution is just to completely uninstall the sense, but you can keep the password and the certificates intact, and then reinstall sense with the correct repository database password. You need that password to be right. Uh, there is there is an article on that, I believe, in our support portal. The other thing that's worth noting, if you run into any problems during the actual installation, we generate logs for the installer generates logs in the temporary folder. I don't know why the shortcut to temp always takes you to a subfolder, but you can see that here. So when we installed ClickSense, we have these. So you can see this log. These logs are very large and very cumbersome to read, but they can give you valuable information when you dig through and find the actual error message. They're Windows install logs, uh, so they are full of a lot of detail about registering and unregistering components and installing files and checking file accessibility. But if you do encounter an error in the upgrade process, that may tell you more information about why that is happening. And certainly, if you then create a support case, that is useful information to have. Uh, it, that is purely for if the installation itself fails. If the services then don't work afterwards, you're going to want to provide the log files contained in our log folders. OK, so we're most of the way through this upgrade. It's going through the printing services. And eventually, when we get to the end, it will, we will need to wait for it to come up. So I am just going to check that. Unregistering the old copy. This is um, my daily. Uh, this isn't strictly the um, best way to check that the system is coming up, but because our system automatically archives the old log files when it finishes its startup, this is basically my um, simple method for monitoring whether or not the system is up and running yet. As you can see, we're getting new log files generated, so the system is actually starting up. But our repository is still still not yet fully up and running. If we look at it now, it will talk about the uh, caching occurring. So it's going through, and it is caching the database to memory. And when these files go away, I will try and open QMC. There we go. So we'll log in again. And here we go. We're running 302. And you can see here that we have the we had four apps showing as yellow here, and that's because they're currently migrating. And that takes a little bit of time. Obviously, the more applications you have, the longer larger number and the longer it will go. OK. So with that, so all the applications have now migrated. And you can see we've also got a new version of the license monitor. Uh, and so and it's also adding a new version of the operations monitor. And with that, uh, the live demo will be done. And we will move to Q&A. So uh, I can see a few questions about Cassandra. Uh, there is not, uh, I can't provide any information on that, unfortunately. So if you've asked me about uh, the move to Cassandra, 
that's nothing that I can address here. I'm sorry. Uh, I can also see a couple of questions about uh, what. All right, let's address the this one first. It's, after the upgrade, I'm not able to see my old logs. Uh, so that we'll go back to the system here. I believe that by that you mean um, if I were to open this log file, for example, it only goes back to when the system last started up. And that's because old log files are always archived. And by old, I mean either logs that are more than one day old or logs that reach a particular size threshold or logs that were created before the system last started up are all automatically archived. And they are archived in the archived logs folder, which is over here in the repository. The pro uh, I've also seen uh, the process of, is this process the same if you're moving from 3.0 to 3.1? Yes, this process is the same if you're moving, is the same. Um, the, can you change the location of apps to a file server in the network? Uh, in theory, yes, you can do that. However, um, since assumes that it has sole access to the files at this time. So you want to, you want to do that. Um, you, you don't want each room node to also be accessing the same share, I guess. Uh, is the, the caveat I would give there. Uh, okay, someone is asking if they can see the backup batch file again. And I, sure, here, here it is. But, um, okay. So, so, in versions of, there's another question, which is, uh, can I repeat what I said about just the storage location when moving from 2.2? Sure. I'll just show where the old information was held and where the new information is held. So the uh, old information was held in the engine configuration, which is, wait, uh, no, it isn't there, sorry. Uh, it is in program data. It's in this engine settings file. Uh, the new information is in here. If you go to engines, you go to central, and the app storage directory is defined here. So you change that. OK. So. Would you need to upgrade a sense 2.2.3 environment to 3.02 before upgrading to 3.1? No, you should be able to upgrade straight to 3.1. Uh, and let's just keep going through. Uh, the can you keep the services? Do you keep the services down on the rim before you upgrade the center, and then run the upgrade on the rim node after the center is up and running? Yes, that is exactly what you should do. You should upgrade the central node first, and you should have the rim nodes down while you do that. When the central node is working correctly, you then move back to the rim nodes. Uh, you then move over to the rim nodes, and you upgrade those. And you check that each rim node is working before you move on to the next one. Uh, OK, other questions? Uh, will a copy of this presentation be sent out? Yes, a copy of this presentation will be available, uh, along with the recording of this session. Um, at, yes, uh, are apps compatible from, uh, from old versions compatible with new versions? Yes, yes they are. Um, do the My Work apps get backed up as well when using the repository backup? Yes, the backup using RSM is meant to contain all of the applications as well. And apps, all applications are, are contained here. So in fact, two of these applications are in my work uh, for the administrator of this. So if I were to go to Hub, we would see, uh, if I were to go to Hub and not make a typo, we would see the 
we would see these My Work applications, sorry for the Swedish, um, and we would also see the monitoring apps in, in separate streams. So the My Work applications are also included in the backup. Okay, what else? If an application fails to migrate, is there any way to recover it? If so, what will be the procedure? If an application fails to migrate, the recovery of that application would depend on why it failed. Uh, one of the most common causes of migration failure that I see is that change to where app, to how you tell sense where apps are stored. That failure is very simple you get the system to try again once you're pointing it at the right folder. Uh, otherwise, it, if the application was corrupted before you upgraded, uh, the new version will still not be able to read it. Unfortunately, um, what you'd want to do is you would want to go into the, uh, you'd want to look for the particular application file and you'd want to try opening it, for example, in desktop and confirm that the file is there, and you can try and re-import the file. Uh, during the initial backups, do my sheets get backed up for published apps? Yes, that is correct. If you if you back up the system, you're backing up the database, and you're backing up the applications, and the restore process should return it to the same place, in that the restore process should also return shared objects, and those kinds of things. It's not the same as having exported all the applications and, start, and installing a new system. Uh, okay. Can you tell us a bit about what the new broker and hub services do? Um, the hub service and broker services are involved in how we display the information on the, how we retrieve and display the information in the hub to you. It's basically changing where some of that functionality lies. Uh, I don't know much more beyond that, uh, unfortunately. If they, if the ports are blocked, however, you will not be able to use the hub anymore, which is a fairly important feature. Uh, what else? Sorry, there are there's a number of kind of repeated questions that I'm trying to look through and determine. Okay. Do you also need to run the cleanup script we're moving from three to three dot one? Uh, and at least in theory, no, I haven't, 3.1 has not been out long enough for me to have actually um, have much experience with that. Uh, but the cleanup, the features that the cleanup script is addressing are all in place in 3. So it should be keeping the system clear. The old values from the system uh, should be cleaned up automatically. So you shouldn't need it moving between 3 and 3.1. Uh, okay, but Andrew, we got time for one more question. Okay, one more question. Uh, how do you set up a purge of the repository archive logs? There is unfortunately no feature that will automatically purge those log files. You could set up something to monitor the directories and automatically clear out logs that uh, or files that are older than a particular date. Um, otherwise, they will sit there until um, and very slowly build up. So they tend not to take up a huge amount of space, but if you are concerned about disk space, then you will want to set up something to do that yourself. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, everyone. We hope you enjoyed this session, and thank you to Andrew for presenting. We always appreciate getting experts like Andrew to share with us. Thank you all once again, and hope you have a great rest of the day.